for today's cup of coffee, we have a story that could have sort of went into the what the fuck files, but I think it's just weird enough on its own to just stand alone on that. From Daily Mail by Emma James on July 13th of 2023, the FBI has arrested an eighth man after discovering 40 human skulls in his home. Cops say James William Knott was part of the macabre underground network dealing in stolen brains, hearts, skin, and fetal remains, which were allegedly stolen from Harvard's prestigious medical school. Knott, 39, had dozens of human skulls which were being used as decoration, as well as hip bones and spinal cords which were being used as furniture in his home in Louisville, Kentucky, according to the complaint. Now, I'd say that, that was more like spines instead of spinal cords because unless they was preserved well, those things kind of decay. One of the skulls had a scarf tied around its neck and another on the bed where Scott slept, with authorities accusing him of purchasing the remains from Jeremy Pauley. And he was the dude that had like all the piercings and he had one of the eyeballs tattooed and stuff. And he's become rather infamous in all this. Polly, 41, has previously been arrested and charged with abuse of a corpse, receiving stolen property, and dealing in the proceeds of unlawful activities. And a separate indictment in Pennsylvania claims that Polly spent $40,049 buying body parts from Josh Taylor, who purchased them from Cedric Lodge. Lodge, the manager of Harvard's medical school for over a decade, is accused of taking heads, skin, bones, and brains from cadavers donated to the prestigious school. A Harvard medical bag was found in Knott's home, and when he asked if anyone else was in the apartment, he said, quote, only my dead friends, end quote. Investigators say that Knott used a different name online and would send pictures and videos of remains to Polly. Polly asked in one transaction, quote, how much total for the couple and the last video you sent plus the spines, end quote. Knott was immediately arrested after the raid on Tuesday and was initially charged with possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Now, this is where this gets really murky legally because some of the things that these people are doing are not necessarily criminal. It may be weird. It may be kind of macabre. Well, it is definitely macabre. This can be done with any crime, with anybody charged with anything. So just keep that in mind as I read the, the next couple of lines on this. And it said that... Uh, Knott has supposedly bought an AK-47 rifle and a 38 Special Charter Arms revolver and ammunition on July the 11th and was previously convicted in 2011 of a felony of possession of an unregistered destructive device that didn't bother to mention what that, what that entailed and possession of a firearm by an unlawful user of marijuana. Welcome to the corrections and or legal industry. Has nothing to do with justice, folks. It says the felon. Because once you get charged, you're no longer a person. You are a felon, which means subhuman on that. Uh, currently remains in federal custody and will face a maximum of 10 years in prison if he is convicted of crimes. An investigation into the grim underground network of human body parts started after Pennsboro Township Police Department received a tip about possible human remains inside of Polly's Pennsylvania home. Polly agreed in May to admit guilt to one count of interstate transportation of stolen property and a second count of conspiracy. The agreement doesn't specify what sentence federal prosecutors will recommend. Polly was also in contact with a funeral home worker in Little Rock, Arkansas, and bought $10,975 worth of body parts. Candace Chapman Scott, 36, was contacted to transport cadavers for the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences, UAMS, since 2014. Her role required her to move the bodies to the UAMS campus and returned the remains, which had been cremated back to the UAMS within 72 hours. 
Federal court documents filed in Arkansas say that Scott first reached out to Polly in October of 2021 and over a nine-month period sold him a heart, brains, liver, kidney, trachea, ears, two fake boobies, lungs, skin, a penis, testicles, a whole head, and two fetus. That, that's got to be fetuses, feti, something like that. And she is facing 12 criminal counts, one count each for conspiracy to commit mail fraud and conspiracy to commit wire fraud, four counts each of mail fraud and wire fraud, and one count each of conspiracy to commit interstate transportation of stolen property and interstate transportation of stolen property. And like I said, a lot of this is a really gray area on, on some of this. I It'd be interesting to, to be an attorney that is their defense attorney. Court records show she has been held without bail since April and was ordered to undergo a psychiatric evaluation. Did her behavior get weird while she was locked up? Which I, I'd say that the behavior of most people gets weird when they're locked up. Or is it that they think that just because she's into macabre and morbid things that there's a problem? What, what about all these people that are in forensics? Are they considered macabre and morbid is their job a separate indictment in pennsylvania claims that polly also spent forty thousand forty nine dollars buying body parts from josh taylor who had purchased them from lodge from at least april of 2021 to january of 2022 it is alleged that taylor of pennsylvania sold human remains he bought from lodge at a higher price to polly well you gotta make a little profit stay in business Taylor pleaded not guilty to the charges in Pennsylvania and was released on bail. A federal incitement revealed that at times, Lodge would take them to his home in New Hampshire, them, I'm assuming that's the body parts, and his wife, Denise, 63, would ship the illicit goods to others in their network using the USPS. So it's family business there. The couple moved from their four-bedroom and three-bathroom $385,000 property in Manchester to a smaller three-bedroom, two-bath house in Goffston in 2020, where they were accused of continuing their grisly scheme. Court documents state that Denise sent stolen human remains from Manchester to Montgomery, Pennsylvania in 2018 and 2019. From the September the 3rd of 2018 through July the 12th of 2021, Taylor sent 39 transactions through PayPal to Denise Lodge for a total of $37,355.56, the indictment states, because you got to have those pennies added on. One payment of $1,000 was referenced as being for head number seven, while another in November of 2020 was sent for brains, which cost $200. That was B-R-A, several, like five I's in S. Lodge and his wife were released on conditions after appearing in federal court in New Hampshire. He is also accused of selling the remains to Katrina McLean, a doll maker from Salem, Massachusetts. On more than one occasion, Lodge is accused of allowing McLean and Taylor access to the morgue to choose which remains to purchase. Well, you know, I can see that. you got to let somebody on the showroom every once in a while. McLean owned and operated a business called Cat's Creepy Creations in Peabody, Massachusetts, where she stored and sold the remains. The 44-year-old appeared in federal court in Boston uh, Wednesday, this past Wednesday afternoon, where she was charged with transporting stolen goods and granted bail. She is also accused of selling the remains to buyers in multiple states, including to Polly. In October of 2020, McLean allegedly sold two dissected faces and skin to Polly for $600, who was hired to tan the skin and make it into leather before ship shipping it back to McLean. McLean is then said to have shipped human skin to Polly in June or July of 2021 so he could tan the leather. In total, he paid her $8,800 in October of 2021 for the stolen human remains. Overall, Polly paid $59,820 $24 for the body parts from various sources, the documents state. 
Polly is accused of reselling the remains he received to others, including tattoo artist Matthew Lampy. Lampy, 52, of East Bethel, Minnesota, and Polly allegedly bought and sold from each other over an extended period of time and exchanged over $100,000 in online payments. If convicted of conspiracy and interstate transport of stolen goods, the seven defendants face as long as 15 years in prison, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And this is just a really bizarre, and because I have a really dark sense of humor, that, that's the reason I sort of try to, ch well, I don't try to not chuckle, but I do chuckle. As much stuff as has gone on in the past couple of weeks that were real crimes, and they're worrying about dude owning the uh, our back background today, which is of a skull with a blunt in it. Somehow that seems a small matter to me. Now, I know that there's people that if it's their loved ones, that that's, that's a horribly tragic thing. But that they're going to want to throw the book at these people when there's just truly travesties going on. And it, this goes back to that two-tier justice you know, system that we have. Injustice system is exactly what it is. Tried not to get, I'm trying not to get political. I refuse to get political. I did the best I could. <laughs> Prayers for kid, if you would, please. Uh, he's got another migraine looking to get a referral to a neurologist for him. So, yeah, just, just like I said, give him some prayers. If you've had experiences with paranormal or supernatural, encounters with UFOs, aliens, cryptids, cool, macabre stories, send us an email, cup of coffee with scream at gmail.com. And the email address will be in the description box along with link to the article. And the backdrop that we used yesterday, that was also from this story, but it, the planetary alignments and that whole Mars, Aries, God of War thing. Yeah, that I felt like people needed to hear that more than, than this story. We got it both done. We got it both done. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. But primarily, know that you're loved. Know that you are very loved, and we'll pray one for another. Lord willing, we'll see you on the next cup. Bye.